Hi everybody, you're drawing a shape. You could be in a tool like Illustrator, could be Sketch, or it could be Figma, as is the case of me right now. And what you want to do is take the shapes that you've drawn, your designs, and turn them into SVGs. And so all these tools provide an easy way to either export or copy what you've drawn as an SVG. And what you might end up seeing is something that looks like this. You have the standard SVG syntax. And what I want to point your attention to is how the shapes that we have are currently represented. In the case of what I drew, which is two circles, what you'll see are two circle elements and the appropriate attributes that help us understand what those will actually do. Now, there's nothing wrong with the way these are defined, but there is a slight challenge here. And that challenge is this. In the many cases where we manipulate and modify our SVG content using HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, the way the SVGs are representing what we've created in the form of shapes just won't work. They need to be in the more generic, more verbose path syntax. So what we saw earlier would look more like this if we had it in the way that we need it for being able to work with SVGs inside our web pages. Now, you might be wondering that You've been using SVGs for a very long time. You've inserted them into your documents, never had an issue of this. And that's correct. For many cases, you will not have any issue. But I will call out some situations, though, where having it be in a path is really the only way for you to be able to create some of the things that you want to ultimately do. One example is I recently wrote an article on how to create spinning circular text. And a core part of this effect is you can see there's some text here that is almost revolving around a circular shape. And this text is defined entirely in SVG. And the way it works, and I'm sure the SVG syntax in a few moments, is that it needs to know what the shape it needs to wrap around looks like. And that shape has to be in the form of a path. If it was in the form of a rectangle or a polygon or a circle or any of the other shape primitives that are available in SVG, this will not work. And here's what the syntax actually looks like. Notice that we have our text. We have the text we're going to ultimately display, part of a heart healthy breakfast. And the text itself is inside a text path element, which tells SVG that this is going to be mapping the contours of a particular shape. And the shape, of course, is defined as this path element right here, where we have path ID equals circle, and then the syntax for uh, how a circle will be represented, or in this case, two ovals, will be represented using the path syntax. If we had this defined as a circle element, this will not work. We cannot have the circle element and have our shape work and wrap around the letters appropriately. This is one example. There are countless other examples just like this. And so what I'm going to do next is just give you very quick approaches for being able to go from a shape to a path-based syntax without too much you know, hassle. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to Figma. And so I'm in Figma right now. I'm drawing some shapes. I'm drawing some rectangles, you know, doing the usual stuff. And let's make this rectangle be green or, or blue. All right. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to copy and paste as SVG. And then it's going to VS Code and just show you exactly what this is going to look like. And let me zoom in a bit so you can see more clearly what's going on. Let's close this. You can see that our SVG is in the form, what we just copied from Figma is you can see circle, circle, rect, you know, kind of not exactly the thing that we want. So what I can do though, is I can go to Figma, I can right click and say, and select outline stroke. This command makes it so that all of the various shapes that make up what I'm currently copying, or at least making turning to SVG, is not represented properly as a path element. So what was earlier two circles and a rectangle is now properly displayed as a path. Now, Illustrator has a very similar command. Sketch has a very similar command. And whatever design tool you're using will have similar commands, but I just chose to use Figma just as an example of how subtle the setting you might need to specify will look like, but how different the output and will be, in this case, exactly what we are looking for. Now, in some cases, you may not have a design tool that's able to do all these things. And so a great tool I like to use is a one-off browser web page called SVG Path Commander, where you can paste in your large chunk of SVG and it will automatically turn them into the path syntax. You can, here you can see an example where this page has like um, a circle, an oval, a star, and a rectangle, and it gets converted into the path syntax below it as part of it. If we go back to what we're creating right here, let me just undo this and go back to our syntax that's like all circles and rectangles. 
if I paste this into the input and then hit convert, notice that you'll now see the shape that we had in Figma, the circle and the rectangle appearing properly. But more importantly, you'll see the SVG output. Let me zoom in even more so you can see it more clearly. You can now see the SVG output being converted from circles and rects to a path element. So a very easy way for you to be able to pull this off without requiring any extra tooling magic that you might otherwise have needed. So there you have it, a very quick overview of why sometimes the primitive shape content in SVGs isn't ideal for what we're trying to do. It needs to be in the path format and how you can go from a shape to a path format in our SVGs, both inside our design tools, but also using a standalone tool like the, the web page. I just showed earlier, link to the web page will be in the description below. And so with that, if you have any questions on this or any topic related to development or web design and so on, post in the forums at formnetcrew.com where I and others will be happy to help you out. Subscribe to my newsletter, very popular, sent multiple times a week. A lot of interesting details across business, technology, and design, so you'll probably enjoy it. Follow me on Twitter for bite-sized updates on things that I'm working on. And of course, if you like my style of explaining things, you might also enjoy a lot of the books that I've written so far. Some are actually quite good, if I do say so myself, available in paperback and digital editions. And with that, I will see you all next time.